Well, hello everyone. You know, as the quarantining from uh, this isolation from COVID-19 uh, continues on, uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's a Gallup poll that's out that I just saw recently where many people said that from a physical standpoint, they're doing okay. They're doing fine. They can probably last quite a bit longer. Uh, but where the toll has been taken is on the mental health side of things. 15% in fact have indicated that they're currently undergoing some impact to their mental health. And, um, and you know, I know that that's happening. <laughs> I can feel it in my own life. Uh, just uh, the other day when we were practicing for music, Chris indicated, you know, he started to feel it this last week, the kind of the stir crazy, the being cramped in. And I know that people are just feeling that the build up over time has an impact. And in fact, 37% of the people said that uh, they would be impacted if this goes on more than two weeks or, or further than that, that they know that there would be a serious mental health impact on them. And of course, we've heard that it could last even much longer than just a couple of weeks, could be months. Uh, and what's interesting is that in the middle of this, uh, a few groups of people are feeling the impact quite a bit more than those. In fact, those with children um, are impacted more uh, than those who aren't. And if you have children running around, especially if you're trying to work, uh, in the middle of that, then you understand, or you've got kids and they're doing distance learning and you have to help them. That impact uh, is even greater than these percentages. Interestingly, uh, those who are 18 to 44 are impacted more than those who are elderly. Now, the, the concern for health-wise would be more for those who are uh, who are older than this, but for those who are, are younger, in the younger group, their impact is uh, definitely being felt in the mental health side. So we're going to be talking about this today, and as we get started, I just want to spend, take a, little, a few minutes and pray and ask God to come and speak to us, because He is the author of life. He is the one who hears. He is the one who can help us. So I'm just going to take some time, and why don't you just pray with me? So Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you love us, and I thank you, Lord God, that none of this has caught you by surprise. I thank you, Lord God, that, that you are working on us and working in us, and I pray that you will come right now and speak to us in the middle of the mental stress, in the middle of all that's going on. And I pray that you will be here now and be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just want to ask you how you are doing, you know, the, the impact of the isolation. You know, how are, how are you feeling? As I had talked about, you know, Chris indicated a little bit more stress. I, I feel that, you know, with co-workers, there's just a, a growing... Uh, sense of, of when is this going to end? <laughs> we want it to end. Please let this end. Uh, one of the things that, that I've seen is that this situation of the isolation is really amplifying either the problems that are going on in people's lives or the good things that are going on. It's really bringing them out, and especially in those relationships, the relationships with family or those who are at home, or just even in your personal life, those things that are going on in the inside of a, a given person. Um, if there are problems there that have been hidden underneath, well, they're coming to the surface. And if there's things that are going well, those are coming to the surface too. So some people are Experiencing the, in, experiencing the quarantine and it's very hard and others are experiencing and it's very good and a lot of this is just pulling out uh, some of what's going on underneath the surface. And there's a, a pastor in, um, in New York um, 
and uh, Pastor Keller, and he made the comment, and I thought this was really true, that in the middle of this, God is using this situation to remind us that we are not in control. We're not in control of the future. We're not in control of our finances, the economy. You know, we like to think and we want to be in control. The reality is that we're not. There's so many things that are beyond our control. But there's a God who is in control and a God who loves us. Now, there's another survey. Actually, it's a study that I just read of. And it was done by, uh, by MIT, uh, Baylor, and Duke. Um, it was published in November of 2019. They looked back on what happened during the Great Recession and after for a number of years because there was a lot of economic turmoil do during those times. So this study is very apropos. It was published before this whole COVID-19 uh, struck. So, but the timing of this is very apropos because they look to see the various things that impacted people's lives during that period of Great Recession and what helped them. And one of the things that, the, that really stood out in this as they did the study is that the subjective well-being, in other words, that feeling that a person has that they're either doing good or doing poorly, um, that's highest back during the Great Recession. It was highest among those who were Christians, okay, of all of the groups of people, but those who were Christians, but not just somebody who claimed to be a Christian, but those who were actively involved in a local church. And not just actively involved, but they also had this strong sense that faith was important in their life. And, and these people had, had something that kept them through no matter what was happening. In fact, the, the swings in the economy did not impact their sense of well-being. And in the study, they were able to attribute this to a sense of purpose, a sense of purpose that these individuals felt. So one of the things that is really interesting is that in the middle of all of this chaos and confusion and the, the, the mental health that gets pulled down, there is something that can help you and that can help me. And that is this sense of purpose that comes from something beyond ourselves, And those people who are following Jesus Christ had, as we've seen in history, a very positive impact to their overall life. Now this is no surprise to those who are following Jesus, but, but if you're not following Jesus right now, this may come as a bit of a surprise to you. So here's the thing. What I would recommend and what would really help all of us, no matter who we are, whether we know Jesus Christ and are following him and faith in him is very important, or whether we don't know him or haven't been following him, perhaps turned away, one of the things that will help our mental health is to grow in our faith. Or perhaps to find a faith in Jesus Christ. Because having faith in God, it provides an anchor that goes beyond circumstances. And I'm not talking about some faith that is in, in just the, the make-believe. This isn't like believing in Santa, but faith that is based on evidence, faith that is based on historical truth, faith that is based on a living and true God who is here today. That is a real faith. That's why people can be touched by the power of Jesus. And so, one of the things that I would encourage you and myself to do is really focus the time that we have on finding God and growing closer to God. So, when you have downtime, 
You know, getting out and exercise, that's a good thing. Getting out and walking, that's a good thing. But what I would encourage you to do, no matter where you're at, is to spend time and get alone with God and pray. Now, it's kind of funny because we are isolated. Now, sometimes when we're in this isolation, there's other in the house. Um, but take some time to get alone, to be with God and to cry out to him. Actually lift up your voice. You know, one of my sons recently was uh, had a, a, a math test and some other tests that were really weighing on him. And he's in college. Um, and these tests and projects were very big and hard. And, and he was being weighed down on with mental uh, stress. And his response to that I thought was perfect. And it's something that I've done in the past but what he did is he said I've got to go out and pray and where he went was out to the car and that for me has been a terrific place also uh, for me in in times past and still today uh, it's a place where I can go and be alone and I can just cry out to God and say God help me God rescue me God save me and we have this promise in, in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, which is an amazing promise. And it says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, not some, not those who are perfect, not those who know Jesus, not those who are doing something wonderful in their life, but it says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, and that is Jesus, it is identified Jesus as the Lord uh, in Romans there. Everyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. They will be rescued. They will be helped. This is rescue from sin, rescue from all of the things that hurt us and weigh us down. And, and the mental health is an area where we need rescue. And so take some time, I encourage you, no matter how much you know Jesus, take time to get alone and cry out to Jesus to fill you up inside because, because God will rescue you. Whether you understand it with your mind or not, God is real and he wants to help you and me. And when we cry out to him and say, God, help me, he's waiting there for you and me to come to him. And so we can grow in him and find him and find hope and find life. So if um, one of the things that's important for us to recognize is that whatever it is that we're focus on, focused on, uh, that's going to get bigger in our view. So if we're focused on our problems of being cramped in and isolated and I can't do this and oh no, what about the economy? And oh no, all these worries, am I going to get sick? What's going to happen in the future? When we focus on those, when we look at the news and see or we're bombarded by those and articles on the internet and on our phones and when that's when we're focused on, that gets so big and overwhelming. But if instead... We focus on God, who is the solution to these problems, because he gives purpose. He has made you, he has made me for a purpose that goes beyond all of these situations. It goes beyond the mere circumstances of life, the, the up and downs of the economy, or the isolation or not isolation. God has a purpose for your life, and he has called you to know him and to find him. So focus on God and ask him to show you your purpose for your life. Now for those of you who know Jesus, but even if you don't, but especially for those who know Jesus, one thing that I would encourage you during this time is to lean in. Lean in to Jesus, seek him no more. Don't just survive, but thrive. And, and I know you, maybe you know that, but, but let me just 
let me just give you some examples of what we've been doing in our house that, that I think have been very beneficial. So, in our house, sometimes when I'm working, um, I can come home late and, and maybe I won't eat dinner with our family. Uh, but during the quarantine, we're all here, and in fact, our older kids, everybody's here. So we've made a point to have one, at least one meal a day. We aim for that. Uh, could be more, given day, where we're all together eating. And not only are we all together eating, but during that time, I observe some challenges in our family. And one of those things were that, that as a family and as siblings, sometimes the conversation turns into like comparisons and, and picking on one another and sibling rivalry. And so I encouraged us to look back to Ephesians chapter 4, where it says, do not let any unwholesome words come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building others up according to their needs. So we took that and said, okay, let's apply this practically to our time. So after dinner, when we were done and we're all gathered around the table, I said, let's not just get up and go, but let's take some time. And I want each person the first time that we did it, I had everybody write down, and I said, I want you to write down at least one positive thing for each person here at the table. And it could be more, but write down something that, that either that you find um, a, a blessing about that person or something that you find good about their character, but something, some way that you can build them up and say something that builds them up according to their needs, as it says in Ephesians chapter 4. So that first time we took actually quite a bit of time and went around and then everybody read about each person. We took one person at a time and everybody read all of the things. And, and let me tell you, it's quite emotionally moving. Um, there were tears <laughs> involved because as people are pouring over you those good words that are building up, um, it can be quite moving. And, and so since then, every day what we've been doing is now we pick one person each day. And we were just drawing numbers, and now we're going from youngest to oldest. But we take one person each meal, and everybody takes a turn and says something positive about them to build them up. And this is working against what normally happens. In our natural life, we sometimes pick people apart and uh, say cutting things and, and jealous things and, and just and just common things. But instead, I wanted to take and, and lean into the positive and lean into what God has called us to do. And I encourage you to do that too. Now, you may not, you don't have to do this particular thing, but what I would encourage you to do is look at your family. Look at those who you're living with and say, what are areas where I need, we need to be built up? And maybe you're by yourself. What is an area where by you, you need to be built up and grow? There's a problem, okay? Whatever that problem is, go and find a scriptural, uh, scriptural uh, promise or pattern or a way of God that you can use that and start ch changing and building that into your life on a regular basis. So whether it's in family time or in personal time, use this on a daily basis to be built up and strengthened, leaning into, into Jesus and taking intentional time of having God as the foundation. And, and you will experience a stronger life. Now, what is important is that you and I don't just, it's important that we be built up and our families be built up and those who we live with be built up. But God has called us to more than that. He has called us to serve those around us. 
And sometimes we feel like, well, in this isolation, what can I possibly do to serve others? Well, there is things to be done. And I would encourage you, especially if you're a believer, but even if you're not, to look for, for uh, ways that you can serve other people. Because this is one of the purposes that God made you and me for. And when we fulfill those purposes, our lives are tracking to what God made you and me for, and that sense of purpose gets built up. So one of our purposes is to know and love and experience God. One of our purposes is to serve others. These are the two greatest commandments. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. And the second, Jesus said, is to love your neighbor as yourself. So look for ways to serve others. So I've been wanting to do that and considering it. And um, this, a few weeks ago, um, a co-worker came. There were some things going on at work, and he reached out to me and said, Hey, can we pray together uh, during this time? And I said, yes, that would absolutely be great. I'd love to do that. And so, you know, like every other meeting at work that's happening right now, we're doing them all remotely, either on the phone or through Zoom. Most of the time we're doing Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Uh, um, but uh, so we met uh, over a Zoom call and just spent some time for sharing a little bit about what's going on in each other's lives. And then we spent the second half of that time praying. And it was so encouraging to me, and I know it was helpful for him as well. He, We both said, man, this is so good, we should do this more often. And one of the things that, that struck me is, as he was asking, as, you know, this is something that I would like to do, not just for us, but for the company. And inside, you know, I was like, oh boy, I don't know how that would be accepted. You know, would people, would I be able to do that? And so I prayed and asked God, asked others to pray as well, and felt that this is something that I should do. And so I, I simply asked and said, would this be something that, that I, um, and this other uh gentlemen at work that, that we can offer uh, to the company and just open up an opportunity for people to pray together to Jesus, to find strength and support because he provides that and, and we felt that and, and so we wanted to share that blessing to anybody who is open to it and we got permission to do that. So what I would encourage you to do is look for opportunities, look for opportunities and when you see them, you may be a little bit afraid or, you know, oh no, what am I going to do? But pray and ask God and then take a step. Take a step of faith to help others. Now, some people have been uh, taking food. You know, Han Jun recently went and was delivering masks to, to people. who He had a few extra masks and so uh, he was delivering uh, masks to people and dropping them off at their door and uh, during the uh, Resurrection Sunday, my wife, Emmy, felt like she really wanted to go and drop gifts, especially for the young kids, but for the adults as well. Uh, so look for opportunities, whether it's taking food to a neighbor, check in and see what they need. Or others, you know, if in this church, check and see, are there people who need help? Or, or co-workers, just ask and see, hey, is there something that I can do to to talk with you, uh, to pray with you, to, to bring you food or encourage you in, in some way. And in these ways, we can not only benefit others, but by, by doing these things, it, it helps us to fulfill our purpose and brings us to that place where our internal well-being is, is feeling much better because God made you and I to love and serve others. So, I'd like to just take a moment and, and say, you know, whether you know Jesus, or perhaps 
you don't follow him, you, you're not a follower of Jesus, or perhaps you know about him, and, but haven't been following him. You know, one of the things that, that I know and have experienced is that Jesus is the hope of the world. He provides help, healing, forgiveness. When Jesus came in uh, John 3.16, uh, God says this about his journey. It says, For God so loved the world, God loves you so much, that he gave his one and his only Son, that whoever believes in Jesus, his only Son, will not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life, that eternal life starts as soon as we believe in him. That eternal life brings us and gives us hope, gives us that, that support, because God is alive and is real. Jesus is not a figment of imagination, but he came in time and in history. And he's the God who loves you. And, you know, one of the interesting things, we were, were watching uh, Antiques Roadshow the other day, <laughs> and some of the things that come up, and my daughter said, well, why would that one, um, that one kind of glass thing be worth $30,000, and this other thing that seems much more valuable, it's only a couple hundred. And the key to that is the value of an object is how much somebody is willing to pay for it. And perhaps right now, you maybe don't feel very valuable. But I want to tell you that God thinks you are valuable. He thinks that you are so valuable, He gave His Son to pay for you. That means that He feels that you are worth the eternal omniscient, all-powerful God himself. That's how much he values you. And so, when Jesus came, he came to, uh, to pay the penalty for our sins. Because you and I, all of us, have sinned. And the Bible says that our sin separates us from God. But God didn't want to be separated, just like we don't like being isolated. God didn't want to be isolated from us. He knew that we needed to not be isolated. And so he said, I've got a solution. I am going to send my one and only son to be with you. And that is why his name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. He is the antidote to isolation because he came to be with us. So whether you are at home by yourself or perhaps you've got a family around you, Jesus is the God who came to be with you and me to provide for us life and help. He came to take away our sins and to pay the penalty. The Bible says in uh, the book of Romans, that the wages of sin is death. The penalty for our sin is death and separation from God. But God didn't want us to be separated, so he sent his son Jesus to die in our place so that we would not be separated from God. And, you know, sometimes people feel, we can sometimes feel, well, I'm not... I'm not able to earn God's favor. And you're right, uh, because you and I, our sin separates us from God, and we don't deserve his goodness, his mercy. But here's the good news, that, that God loves us even when we're sinning, and he calls us out of our sin. And in Romans 5, 8, it says, God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we're still sinners, in the middle of running after our own ideas, in the middle sometimes of 
hating God and shaking our fist at him, it says he still loved us and sent Christ to die for us. He doesn't demand that we fix ourselves. This isn't some self-help religion. This isn't somehow making ourselves better. But Jesus came while we're sinners. And he came to change us. And that brings us back to the hope that we have in, in Romans chapter 10 that we saw earlier. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that is saved from our sin and isolation from God. It's saved from our, our mental stress. It's saved from all of the problems. So right now, wherever you're at, I urge you to pray with me. Pray with me right now. Father God, in the middle of this isolation, we need you. I need you, Lord God. Lord, you are showing us and we can see very clearly that, that we cannot control this world. We cannot control the future, our finances, our health, nothing. But you are the God who created this world. And sometimes you, you do things to get our attention and you're getting our attention now. So, Lord, I pray that our eyes would be awakened to you. And right now, Lord, I say to you, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Rescue me out of this situation. Rescue me. Rescue us, Lord. And, and if you're somebody, let's just take a minute. If you're somebody who, who has not followed Jesus, or perhaps you followed him in the past, and um, you've gone away. Well, what I would encourage you to right now is let's just take a few minutes and pray together and ask Jesus to come and to rescue you, to take away all of your sins, to forgive you, to wash you, and come and be the God who is with us. Will you pray with me right now? You can repeat after me or pray your own words, but let's just pray together. Jesus, I pray for your help. I pray for your forgiveness. I pray that you will take away my sins. I want to belong to you. I want you to be God with us, the God who is close to us, the God who is close to me, because I need you now. I need your help. I need your rescue. I need you. So, Father, Help us and save us now. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that, Father, right now, that wherever people are at who are listening, that you will come and be with them right now. I pray that by your Holy Spirit, that you will minister and speak to the hearts that are restless. Speak to the hearts that are worried and say to them, Peace, be still. Say to those who are, are feeling worried about the future that you are in control. Father, speak your love over each one, I pray. Speak your healing over each one. Speak your protection and your provision. Lord Jesus, you said, that anybody, that if we put you first and seek your kingdom first, that you will take care of all of our needs, our, our food and clothing and shelter. So, Father, I pray for those people who are struggling with finances right now. I pray that you will help them. And for those who are struggling, Jesus said to seek him first. So seek him. And he has promised to take care of your needs. So, Father, provide, I pray. Bless. Protect, Lord. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, thank you very much for joining. And if you have prayed and, and God has spoken to you, I encourage 
you to reach out and, and talk to us. I'd love to talk to you personally. Uh, if you send a, an email to info at di.church, info, I-N-F-O, at di.church, we will uh, reach back out to you. I'd love to talk with you. If you've given your life to Christ, I'd love to talk with you and pray with you some more. If uh, you just need some encouragement, also, uh, same email address. Well, thank you, and the Lord bless you, and I hopefully will speak to you soon. All right, the Lord bless you. Goodbye.